thank you. Good afternoon to the members of the media. Good afternoon, Minister Fogo, and good afternoon, Alicia and Derek. In the 2018 throne speech, we committed to creating opportunities for our youth, saying, and I quote, one area into which youth services can be expanded is representative opportunities internationally through foreign exchange programs and partnerships with organizations like CARICOM and the Commonwealth. Therefore, the Cabinet Office will devise a program to base young people in London, Brussels, and Washington, D.C. to shadow the government's representatives in those cities, thus gaining invaluable experience on the world stage. This program will be further enhanced by a revived internship initiative to secure fresh talent for careers within the public service." End quote. I am pleased to announce today that we have kept that pledge to our youth through a series of programs designed to achieve these aims. First, we will launch a Department of Workforce Development Enhanced Program. The top five undergraduate summer student applicants will be nominated for this program and assigned to the Cabinet Office to work on significant projects in the area of policy and strategy in the delivery of government's initiatives. From June to the end of August, they will have the opportunity to assign them to areas that match their interests or course of study within the public service. Secondly, there will be a summer internship program, which will see three postgrad or master's degree candidates assigned to our overseas offices. This attachment will be for up to 12 weeks, providing invaluable experience in an international setting. These are exciting times to be in the world's leading political and business centers, and this experience will be of great benefit to these students and to Bermudians. Finally, we will have two leadership scholars drawn from the top students of the Barclay and the Cedar Ridge Academy who will join the Bermuda delegation to the heads of government meeting of CARICOM later this year. These young people will travel with the government team and experience firsthand the critical meetings and discussions that take place at both these annual gatherings. Additionally, we will build into the visit the opportunity to link with institutions of higher learning and student peers also engaged in the journey towards tertiary education. By providing these opportunities, we will lay the groundwork for encouraging young people to choose careers within the public service and will similarly provide diverse summer student opportunities for Bermudian students at the secondary and tertiary levels. This government promised to create the conditions that will set Bermudians on a path to success. These experiences will make the young men and women who participate better employees, more strategic thinking public servants, and most importantly, better citizens. These programs are investments in the future of Bermuda. The value for money these experiences present is significant, but do not take it from me. Today I am joined by Glenisha Simmons and Derek Lamb, who are now public officers cultivated by a previous Cabinet Office internship program. In the current weeks, precise details around the application process for the summer internship program, as well as further information on the DWD, or sorry, Department of Workforce Development Enhanced Program, and the Leadership Scholars will be made available. Next, I'd like to discuss uh, items and that are related to the recent events in the United Kingdom and the European Union. And given those recent events, it is important that Bermuda take an active role in promoting our economy overseas and reminding global business leaders why Bermuda is different. This year, I have been extended an invitation in my capacity as Premier of Bermuda to attend the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. This is of particular significance as I am the only overseas territory leader to have been invited to attend and be among world leaders engaged in important issues that impact the global agenda, issues that are vitally important to Bermudians and Bermuda. While in Davos, I will participate in a series of meetings and discussions on global topics ranging from technology and education to social issues and the environment. Joining me in Davos will be Mr. Andy Burrows, CEO of the Bermuda Business Development Agency, and Mr. Dennis Pitcher, FinTech Consultant to the Government of Bermuda. We will be using this excellent opportunity to advance this government's agenda for growth and economic diversification 
while we continue to promote Bermuda as a leading jurisdiction for international companies. We will also use the platform to meet with global companies that have Bermuda entities but currently no physical presence to discuss our approach to economic substance and why Bermuda will be the right choice for multinational corporations to establish physical operations to meet the new global requirements. We will also speak to foreign investment opportunities in Bermuda, not only in international business and infrastructure development, but also in hospitality and tourism. The way the world does business is changing, and Bermuda cannot afford to be on the sidelines. We are a well-respected financial center and have a well-educated and eager working population, able and ready to be retrained and retools for the jobs that can and will be moved to Bermuda. We must take every opportunity to tell the story of our history with hosting companies with substance on island. The World Economic Forum in Davos will continue to raise the visibility of Bermuda so people can learn more about what it is that we're looking to do and how we intend to create additional economic growth in Bermuda, which will provide additional jobs. In conclusion, this government is making steady progress. Bermudians demanded from us with their votes and through their trust. Entrenched systems are slow to respond to change, but we have an imperative to deliver economic growth and increased opportunities for Bermudians. As one of my predecessors, Dame Jennifer Smith, was fond of saying, and I quote, change is a process and not an event, end quote. Issues at home and abroad demand our attention as we set the stage for a more fair and equitable Bermuda. The growth we encourage will not be at the expense of Bermudian aspirations. Our mandate is clear. Bermudians, like Lanisha and Derek, must come first in their own country and the opportunities for growth will be developed in keeping with the promises we have made and the trust we have earned and highly value. We cannot repeat the mistakes of the past where economic successes left Bermudians a distant second. Our people have rightly demanded a seat at the table and in every meeting, on every panel, the emphasis will be on the creation of jobs in this economy and providing opportunities to Bermudians first. Thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions that you may have. Absolutely. Um, the advised internship program will be paid. Uh, the persons who are in the enhanced program uh, here at the cabinet office, the top five, will be paid um, and remunerated at one thousand uh, dollars per week. Um, and the summer internship program will pay the same amount in the foreign offices of uh, Brussels, um, London, and attached to our representatives in Washington, D.C. Does that have any impact on the uh, Washington office being um, it doesn't have necessarily an impact on the Washington office being reopened. It's an excellent question. Right now, Bermuda's uh, operations are maintained by um, a company that is our, lo our lobbyist of record. And the uh, attachment for the person who's selected there, if the Washington, D.C. office is not yet open at that time, will be working on Bermuda matters with um, our, uh, our overseas representatives. Do you have the, um, uh, the amount of funds that will be allocated towards Absolutely. The total budget amount for this, uh, the initiatives of which I've laid out, is $70,000, and those items will be met from our existing budget and reallocation of existing funds. So there's no new money that I'm asking the Minister of Finance for. Uh, moving on to uh, UK, sorry, UK issues, um, the Prime Minister has been calling for the current uh, Brexit uh, rejection. What I would say is that uncertainty is unfortunate. Um, and it's unfortunate for the United Kingdom. But from the perspective where Bermuda stands, Bermuda has a solid and stable government, a very strong history of sound regulation. And from the perspective of our message to our international companies and partners is this is a reason why Bermuda stands apart. We are stable, unlike the instability that is being seen in the United Kingdom. And so from the perspective of which we have, 
we are going to continue to monitor the events of the United Kingdom, but we're also going to make sure that we remind our international partners that from an insurance perspective, Bermuda does have solvency to equivalents. There is not a question as to whether or not companies operating inside the United Kingdom will have that access. They may have that question over on the UK side, but from the Bermudan perspective, we intend to maintain that equivalence, and we must view this as an opportunity for Bermuda to expand its operations. It is unfortunate for the United Kingdom what they're going through, but we cannot allow the internal political turmoil that they are doing to distract from our mission, which is to attract additional companies to Bermuda to provide jobs and opportunities to Bermudians. Good afternoon, Mr. Good afternoon. And with regards to the Economic Substance Act, you said it would be obviously promoting the island as um, a place for those entities to, you know, bolster their substance. What do you think makes Bermuda more attractive than perhaps other petition receives territories in the same mm -hmm. position? Well, I think what makes Bermuda more attractive is that we've had a long history of substance. And one of the things of which I say um, overseas is that there is a reason why in Bermuda that we have more people than we do have companies. Um, and that is because we have had a history of substance and not everyone can get into uh, Bermuda. I think that that is an excellent differentiating factor for companies that are looking to adjust their global operations after these new rules have come in. And we must note that the World Economic Forum has the leaders of all the major companies. Um, all the major uh, international companies are going to be there. And so some meetings have already been secured and we're going to have those discussions and, and talk about uh, those particular issues. Because as the rules change, we have to be prepared to make sure that we can take advantage of those rule changes to benefit Bermudians. One of the things we've always spoken about is the need to grow the economy, the need to diversify the economy. This presents an opportunity, and we've been working on a strategy from, for the last few months on how we're going to exploit this opportunity. And so we are going to take our message on the road. Um, I'm very pleased and privileged that um, as the, I've been extended an invitation to the World Economic Forum, and we'll be able to have those discussions at a very high level, which was not an opportunity that we had last year. Um, and you talked obviously um, with regards to the Washington DC office and, and lobbyists there. Um, any further update on the office in Brussels? On the office in Brussels, absolutely. Thank you for um, answering the question. Uh, following uh, the uh, meetings, uh, sorry, asking the question, following the meetings at the World Economic Forum, uh, which I will be on, I will be in Switzerland from Monday to Thursday. On Friday morning, I will be flying to the Brussels office, in to Brussels, um, and Friday afternoon, we'll be opening the Brussels office. And as you would be aware, I've had a number of meetings over the past uh, 18 months with various officials in Brussels, um, and they will be invited to that office opening as well. But now that the United Kingdom um, is, some may assume, leaving the EU, <laughs> others may assume not, we don't recognize what uncertainty that may have. It is more vital than ever that we have direct re uh, representation in Brussels. Um, and all, all the, I would say, the ambassadors of which I've met and the permanent representatives that are there have been invited, and I look forward to seeing them at that opening. Thank you very much. No problem. Anything else? All right. Thank you, everyone.